Welcome to 68 Shining Moments presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Today we catch up with former Arizona star Miles Simon, the most outstanding player in the 1997 NCAA tournament when the Wildcats knocked out three number one seeds to win the national title. All right, now pleased to welcome in the most outstanding player back in the 1997 NCAA tournament, one that is a little bit dear to my heart as an Arizona alum, <laughs> as an Arizona alum that uh, drove all the way up from Boston with my now wife uh, to watch you, Miles Simon, go for 30 in the national <laughs> title game. But um, can we can we backtrack? Can we backtrack to the beginning of that season and what that year was like for you? Because it wasn't all roses. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was crazy um, because obviously I started off the season academically ineligible. And I think I missed the first 12 or 13 games, whatever the number was, pretty much the whole the whole first semester. And the team got off to a crazy hot start. You know, they beat North Carolina, a um, few other good teams and uh, Jason Terry, who kind of took over the starting spot for me. He was playing lights out, Dickerson, Bibby, those guys were playing great. Um, so uh, tough for me not to be able to play, but, you know, happy for my teammates and the success that we had early on in the season. What are you thinking though? Watch, watching him. I mean, it had to be bittersweet, right? Like, you know, I can't believe I put myself in this situation. Uh, these guys are winning without me. It had to be kind of a, a litany of emotions. You know, you know, I was just more just trying to to get to get through the semester and finish out um, my grade strong so that so that I could play and be there for my teammates because I knew we had a good team, obviously. Um, so that was kind of foremost on my mind. And then just just supporting them. Um, I was still able to practice every day. So giving them everything I had in practice and then staying in shape and then just being ready to go when it was time time to be able to play again. I mean, you guys had so much talent. I mean, seriously, Bibby is a freshman. <laughs> like you and I know how how talented Michael Dickerson was. Yeah. And then you throw you in the equation. I mean, you guys were loaded. But I, but I think at that time people didn't know that because there was no there was no seniors. You know, we lose uh, Ben Davis, Reggie Geary, Joseph Blair, Corey Williams, Joe McClain from the team the year before that we went to the Sweet Sixteen. But people didn't know Michael Dickerson was a starter for one year. Jason Terry was a, a role player who didn't play a lot of minutes as a freshman. And then Mike Bibby, I know he, he was the McDonald's All-American and, and one, the number one or two point guard or whatever. But still, you're, you're unproven at that time as a freshman. True. And people didn't know that, you know, A.J. and Eugene Edgerson, who was a freshman, and Bennett Davison, how good those guys were. So we we're still unproven, even though we knew collectively how talented we were. Uh, the rest of the country did not. So you come back and uh, it, it went from where you were really hot as a team to you guys weren't so good. Right. I mean, you struggled through Pac-12 play a little bit, I think 11 and seven, fifth in the league. And nobody's really paying attention to you guys as a legitimate, you know, final four contender. Well, let, let's let's remember how good the Pac-10 was. Okay, Stanford, Cal, UCLA. Um, we had legitimately, I think, four teams went to the Sweet 16, two to the Elite Eight, and obviously we win the title. And finishing fifth in the league makes for a better story for the national title. But going into the last weekend of the Pac-10, we were actually tied for second. But we had to go to the Bay Area for our last two games, which is two of the hardest places to play yes, at right. Maple Pavilion. They were good and Cal was good. And we lost on a buzzer beater to Stanford. And then we lost in the last 30 seconds or minute to Cal. So, like, we could have been second, but we finished fifth, which makes our national title story better because we were 11 and five. We could have been 13 and five. Um, but the Pac-10 the Pac was, I mean, it was a monster at that time uh, in the mid to mid to late 90s. Yeah, no, it, no doubt, no doubt. So you, you go in, do you remember Selection Sunday? Do you remember getting the, the number four seed and you guys being together? Like, what was the, what was the reaction? I, I don't remember, but I, I mean, I know that when our team got together for the first time, like, we didn't really, the seeding didn't matter to us. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to know who our opponents were, who we were going to play, 
and just be ready for that. And then just seeing Kansas, I think seeing Kansas in our bracket is what got us hyped up because they were, they were the best team in the country. Like no doubt they only had one loss. I think it was to Missouri. Um, they were, they were a monster. And so seeing them in our bracket as the possible sweet 16, not that you want to look too far ahead in the tournament, but we, we saw that potential matchup. Yeah. I mean, listen, I remember, I think I was watching it from a sports bar in Boston, the South Alabama game. And I'm like, Oh no, here we go again. <laughs> Cause obviously the program had had some, some rough patches, yeah. and some first round losses. And, uh, it was scary I experienced there. one of those my freshman year. Exactly. Yeah. You were I in experienced it. one of those first round losses, <laughs> right. Miami, Miami of Ohio against nope. uh, Herb Sendek in Dayton. Oh boy. But, but the South Alabama game was crazy. Um, because uh, Musselman was the coach, and they were a team that played like this slow down, kind of grinded out style, used like all the shot clock. But I remember one specific play, one of their guys, they were, they were beating us with like seven or eight minutes to go. He shot one too quick, like early in the clock. Really? And we raced down and scored, and we set up our press, and then we went on like a 13 or 15-0 run, and that changed obviously the whole dynamic of the game. Then you got what, Charleston, second round? Yeah. Charleston yeah. second round. Was, yep. Another underrated team, Anthony Johnson, Thaddeus Delaney. And they had the longest winning streak in the country at the time. They had won 25 or 26 really? in a row. Uh, so they, they another another team that obviously gave us problems and went down, went down to the wire in that game. All right. So then you get the big boy. Then you get Kansas in the Sweet 16. And <laughs> do you remember kind of the buildup there? Any any great stories about kind of going into that game? And and they were pretty confident, obviously. Uh, I do remember one specific story or a couple of stories, actually. Uh, the first one is the newspaper, either the day of or the day before in Birmingham, it just said Kansas and the others because <laughs> it was – Kansas, this powerhouse that nobody thought could be beat. And then it was um, us, uh, Tennessee, Chattanooga, I believe, and Providence, who were, I think, both were double-digit seeds. Yeah. So, like, nobody was giving us a chance. And I remember reading that, that headline in Birmingham. I was like, okay, they're not, they're not giving us a chance at all. But the way I looked at it was like, how's Kansas going to match up with us? Like, I'm taking Mike Bibby over Jacques Vaughn, even though he's All-American. Mike Bibby was having a great year. Um, I'm taking myself over Jared Haas for sure. <laughs> uh, I'm taking Michael Dickerson over Paul Pierce. Right. And then and I feel like inside, I know Rafe LaFrance, Rafe LaFrance was a monster, but I felt confident enough for our guys to, you know, you hold, to hold their own. Yeah. You had a good collection yeah, of then, pigs that were tough, that yep. knew their role. You had, you know, AJ's length. They were athletic. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're athletic. They rebound. They play, play their role to a T. And then the ex, we're bringing Jason Terry off the bench. Like you can't, you can't match that. That speed, the defense, the shooting. So, like, um, so I remember that being Kansas and the others. And I think that was also at the point where Jason Terry started sleeping in his uniform um, <laughs> in the hotel. So, like, dude was going full on cat socks and and uniform <laughs> the night before the games, which who then had, became who had a room story. with him, Miles. Who had a room with uh, his room? His roommate, his roommate was AJ. His roommate <laughs> was AJ. Yeah. But they were, they were super tight. Cause they were, they were roommates at the, not only on the road, but they were roommates at home. So like nothing that JT did was going to be out of the ordinary or strange for AJ to see. So what, what was that game like? I mean, that was one of the best games uh, to me again, as an Arizona alum who at that time, I could actually cheer for, for Arizona. Now I can't and haven't been able to. And I was like, <laughs> that was the last time I could actually cheer for my alma mater. Well, I, I think we shocked them really with like our speed and quickness and our shot making ability. Um, speed and quickness on the defensive end and then transitioning that to the offensive end. And, you know, we got up either 15 or 18, you know, maybe even 20 points in that game. And, uh, you know, I think we really blew the doors off them and 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 shocked them in some in in uh, in a great sense. And then they made a run at the end. I think we kind of like took the took our foot off the pedal. And but credit to them, like they kept fighting, they kept making shots, and then they're they're just grinding it out. 
Uh, and then LaFrance has, there's a frantic flurry at the end where they have some shots and LaFrance has that fade away in the corner to try to tie it. And then it was just pure, pure elation. Um, it was crazy. You know, I remember us running over to the, to the press tables and like we, me and JT and Eugene Edgerson are jumping on the tables. My, my sister and grandmother had come to Birmingham and they were, they, my grandma, she jumped on the, uh, she jumped on the table with us. No the way. table collapsed. Uh, and it was, it was, it was awesome. Uh, I mean, classic. And I didn't like, know that. Yeah. I mean, like loot was, you know, loot was all calm, cool and collected. Cause obviously he expected us to, to win and he was, he was being loot. So, which was, which was even cooler. Um, but that was, I mean, that was unbelievable game to be, to, to win that one. Before we continue that interview, I have to let you guys know that it's that time of year again. We waited two years for this moment, and it's finally here. March's biggest tournament is back. Gonzaga is getting ready to run the table. Slippers are being fit as we speak. And our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook, are putting our lit listeners at the center of the action. How? If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week, and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right. $256. Here's how it works. Download the app now and use the promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on them to win, and cash $256 when they do. There's no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to use than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe. It's secure. It's reliable and you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So remember, the code is FIELD68, that's FIELD68, to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time only, must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLING. How do you get quickly? Because you've only got a little bit of time here to kind of get back down to earth and prepare for a Providence team that that had Austin Crozier and and some God Sham God. They had talent. They were like a number, I think you said like a number 10, 10 or 11. Yeah, seed. yeah, something like that. Yep. Cause they I think they had Duke was maybe number two in our region. I think they had upset Duke. Uh easy to get focused when you're playing for the final four and the way that our group was. So like we knew the job wasn't done. Like Kansas was just um, for us part of the part of the journey, and we had bigger goals in mind that we had set before the start of the season, um, and and so it was easy with the quick turnaround. We were like, okay, we got we got Providence. They're here. Doesn't matter their seed. They're obviously one of the best eight teams left in the country. So we have to handle our business. And we knew Austin Crozier. He, he was he was a monster, and that he uh, he was going to be a problem for us. And Jamel Thomas and uh, God Sham God. So they you know they had a good team. Yeah, Jamel and, Thomas. And sure. obviously same same thing. They gave us problems too. We we had a big lead. We gave it up at the end. They actually had a shot to win the game before it goes to overtime because we were making so many mistakes down the stretch. And then luckily, uh, you know in overtime that uh, we were able to able to pull it out and and uh cut down those cut down those uh, first set of nets so give me kind of what it was like that week back on campus you come back you're you're at the, you're in the final <laughs> four like what was that whole atmosphere like man uh wild i i remember coming when we got back from birmingham going straight into McHale center and it's just packed. And just the reception that we, we got from the fans was, was so amazing. Um, obviously, you know, we have one of the best fan bases in the country and just like super excited, you know, obviously just the talk of the town, um, hard to go, hard to go to class. Like, you know, like hey, you, had, you had to go to us. class miles. You had no choice after <laughs> for, earlier for in the year. For sure. I, for sure. I had to, um, hard to focus when you're in class and like, you know, cause people are just congratulating you, like making the final four and, and, and all this stuff. And, and then you're trying to, you know, your, your family's getting ready to come to Indianapolis and you're only, I think we qualified on a Sunday. So like you're coming back, you got Monday and Tuesday. Maybe we left Wednesday. We probably left Wednesday for the final four, Wednesday or Thursday. So it's such a short, short week 
And then you're trying to, you know, focus and practice uh, to play North Carolina, a team that we had already played earlier in the year. Um, but it, I mean, it, it was fun, just like being able when you're going to the restaurants or just getting gas or whatever you were doing, just everybody um, showing you a lot of love. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, again, it was just one of those things where, you know, what people don't understand, Arizona's never won a national title. Um, you, you got one number one seed out of the way, but you still got two more waiting for you here or what, what we thought was going to be two more <laughs> waiting for you. So I, I still think nationally, nobody really gave you much of a shake. In Tucson, people obviously thought, hey, there's a chance here. We know what we have, really good guards, bigs that, that knew their role. But, you know, you're going up against Carolina now. I think it was Dean Smith's last game coaching. It was, Dean, Sm it was Dean Smith's last game. It was. I mean, yeah. again. That, I'm you you don't know that at the time, though, right? Because he didn't right. he didn't retire yeah. till the the fall, yep. so you you didn't know that at the time that it was going to be his last game. And Carolina is just, I mean, loaded with lottery picks and Vince Carter and Anton Jameson and Shamon Williams had a heck of a career. Um, uh, Ed Cota's, you know, throwing dimes, you know, all over the floor. Serge Wicker, Okalaja, I mean, they're they're loaded, and they want revenge because we beat them in the opening game of the year. And, and again, they're Carolina, they're Carolina and, and everybody's Carolina. expecting them to roll over you. Um, of course you and you and baby had huge games in that game. Right. I mean, both of you came to play, which you did really every game in the tournament, but that one, I felt like, um, again, you and baby just controlled that one from what I remember. Yeah. If the one thing that happened in that game is that we got off to an extremely slow start. Um, they were up like 15 to four. Vince Carter has like two or three dunks. And I mean, they just jumped on us. And, you know, like Carolina, Carolina, Blue, they travel well. Yes. And, and it was rocking in there. And with so many of their fans, it's loud. And, uh, but, you know, coach called timeout. And, and I just remember one thing, like for me being uh, the leader of the team, I just told the guys, I was like, give me the ball for a little bit. And I think I hit a three, maybe another bucket. And then all of a sudden the, the game tempo started to change a little bit. And, um, and then we gained, regained control after that early jump by them. And then our, our defense, we did, we did a great job. I think Shamal Williams went 0 for 10 or 11, something from the field. And uh, Mike Bibby was, he was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, he hits six threes, just cool as ice. Like he had just been there his whole life, which was, which was awesome to see. That was Bibby, right? Like he never knew. Yeah. Like he didn't show any emotion. Zero. Nothing. Nothing phased that guy. He was. It's kind of so crazy, tough, man. As a freshman, like he came in and just kind of had that even keel personality. I wonder, like, how did that work with 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 Luke with with Coach Olson and and because again, he was kind of that way too. You know, were, were they kind of? Um, did they work well together because of that? In a way. Yeah, they did because Mike was super coachable. Um, he just wanted to learn and he just wanted to get better. That that's, that's all Mike was about. And Mike was really about winning. Um, he was, you know, a two time state champion, um, you know, in Arizona and he, he really, he just cared about winning yeah. and his work ethic was so, uh, great for an 18, 19 year old freshman. Yeah. You know, he really, he, he wasn't a great shooter when he came into college. And he just actually, you know, I got to give Josh Pastner some love because, you know, there's stories told about Josh's influence as a walk on uh, for our team. And though his influence was real, yeah. he would he would literally as a walk rebound for guys at nighttime after practice, whatever, uh, which was big. That's not normal for a guy who's on the team. Right. And he really helped Mike because they would just do spot shots all the time. And this is before like individual training was like a big thing. This is 1997. And Josh is just rebounding for him. And man, it really, it, it paid off. Uh, you know, Josh always says that Mike Bibby owes him some of his like hundred million dollars that he made in the NBA because he helped him become a good shooter or a great shooter. I should say. Josh made enough money. He's made enough money. Yeah, John. He, he trust me, he hadn't spent a, and he hadn't spent a penny. Uh, He's very, good. Very true. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the thing that also impressed me, Miles, was like he never wanted attention, right? Like a freshman that normally comes in with all that hype, they want the attention. Like Mike Bibby didn't want any of it. No, and here, here's a good story about uh, attention in in the Final Four, and 
obviously it's not a non-social media age. And so our hotel was downtown, um, right near, right near the RCA dome at the time. And, you know, they have a mall downtown. And so when we got into town in Indianapolis, me, Josh, Mike Bibby, uh, Justin Wessel and John Ash, we go over to the mall, literally the first day we get to Indianapolis. I mean, and the mall's packed. We like, we sat down and like ate some food, walked around, you know, went in like lids and Foot Locker. No, nobody noticed. Really? Not one, not one like autograph, nothing. Like that, I mean, we were like super inconspicuous, like the whole time we're in there for like two hours, just chilling and no, nobody notices Arizona basketball again and we got to get, for sure we had to get we had the gear on right right but you yeah. know what kentucky's there and carolina's there and no that's question. what people that's... wanted to talk about right yep yep absolutely so so you get past carolina now you're in the national title game like it's here you've already got two number ones knocked off now you got rick patino in kentucky um ron mercer wing turner a good team, a really good Kentucky. I mean, they're all good teams at that point. You're leaving some names. They had a lot of pros. Jamal McGlore, Nazi, Nazi. Muhammad, yeah. Scott yep. Pageant. Yeah, so They that's had right. dudes that played in the NBA. Yeah, a long time. A lot of those bigs, you're right, were like good rotation bigs in the yeah. NBA. Yeah. No, you're right. They were yep. deep. What they were was deep uh, as much yep. as anything. And um, it was close at half, Miles, right? It was close at half from what I remember. It was kind of a grinder type game. And um, but go, go going into it, what what was kind of the mood like locker room before the national title game? And when you got, kind of go out in the court, like what is it like crazy nerves, no nerves? What do you like? Uh, butterflies for me, individual butterflies. But that was like natural. Like that means I'm ready, ready to play um, type of thing. And then once the ball goes up, I was good to go. Just, fo- uh, I mean, just laser focused on, on the task of hand, man. Cause like, that's, this is like your one, your one shot to win it all. And you're playing Kentucky and now we're playing the third number one seed. And what other people don't realize about our run, why it's still one of the most underrated. And I feel one of the greatest college runs. We, we, not only did we beat the three number one seeds, we beat the three winningest college programs of all time. Right. 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 That's crazy. And this, and people still don't talk about that because um, no one's ever beat three number one seeds still. Right. And not that we knew that at the time, but it was still Kentucky. They were the defending national champions, and they had a loaded they had a loaded squad. Um, but our our team was so our team was so focused. And one thing that stood out um, in rewatching the game and thinking about the game years later is that Kentucky was at that time, Patino was known for their pressure and pressing. They didn't press us to start the game. And to me, like I got in the game because we had practice press break the day in between games, like for the whole game, how we're going to operate our press break. And obviously with our guards, we felt like, okay, we're going to be fine. We're not really going to turn it over that much. Probably why he didn't press. And correct. But that also showed a sign of, I'm not going to say fear, but a great sign of probably respect that they had for us um, because their game was, was pressing, taking people out of the, out of what they want to do, speeding them up, turning them over. Um, and they didn't, and they didn't do it. And like, to us, I was like, okay, they, maybe they have a, a little bit of fear, like, you know, um, against us, but it was a heck of a game. Like you said, it was back and forth. I don't think either team led by more than five points uh, the for the whole game. Yeah. yeah. And, and you had, I don't want to say the best game of your career, but it was it was up there, Miles. It was up there with the best of them on the biggest stage. Like when you look yeah. back at it, like do you still think like how far you came? Not being able to play at the beginning <laughs> of the season, beating three number ones, and having arguably the best game of your career in in again the national title game. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, ever since I was young, um, I always prided myself on being my best in the biggest moments. Now it didn't always happen, but, uh, but I wanted to be great in those moments and to score 30 points in the national title game, uh, mind you, without making a three pointer, I was I had 14 for 17 from the free throw line. 
um, you know, was even like crazy, crazy accomplishment, you know, to, to win it, to score 30, to get the MOP. And, you know, a little bit of my background, like I was a big final four guy growing up. My dad took me to six or seven final four. So like, for me, like the final four is like the pinnacle of basketball and, uh, to do that and like see my dad in the stands and have him there. That was like, that was the, that was the ultimate for me. And then to cap it all off to get one for Lou because he had been so close, uh, so many times, uh, at Iowa, uh, late eighties with Sean Elliott and Kerr, Damon and Khalid in 94 to get him that national title, because he is truly one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in college basketball that was special. And to see him celebrate it with Bobby, um, that, 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 that was the, that was the cherry on top because coach was so good with us, such a great teacher, such a great like father figure, um, whatever you wanted him to be, he was those things. And, and, uh, and then to bring it home to Tucson who had become the city had become this basketball crazed place under Lou Dolson, uh, was awesome. What was, what was it like after you beat Kentucky, you win it all. Give me kind of the, you know, again, Lou Olson, like what was he like in the locker room after what did he say? <laughs> Do you even remember anything after what he said? I don't, I don't remember anything he said. Uh, didn't really matter at that point. He had already <laughs> won it. Uh, the thing, like I'm, uh, I'm also like a memorabilia guy. So like I had member. So when the buzzer goes off, remember I laid ball. down on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So I had the ball, took it, took the ball back to my room, had the ball. I wanted to keep the ball forever. Had the ball next morning with early flight next morning. uh, I have the ball on, on the plane and coach Olsen comes down the aisle and he's like, he's like, ah, who has the basketball from the game last night? And everybody's like, miles does. And I had to reluctantly give that ball to coach Olsen. uh, But deservingly so the ball should be with him um and so he, he so we had the ball so that that's that was a big standout um you know the game tipped off really late like nine o'clock and then you know it takes forever and then you're doing media afterwards and then of course like you're not really going to sleep so there's a you know there's a steak and shake in downtown indianapolis and at like I three in well. the morning yeah me uh justin wessel bennett davison was there john ash like Mike, Bibby, like our players just were hungry. We go to Steak and Shake and it was, I mean, it's like packed with people. And so like half the Arizona squad walks in there and it was a cool moment. Like everybody starts chanting MVP, MVP. Really? And I'll never forget that walking into Steak and Shake and still like when I go to um, Indiana now, like Indianapolis, if we're playing, if we're playing the Pacers or whatever, uh, I'll see that Steak and Shake and still like you know, relive that, relive that memory of, of that, of that night. Well, it's kind of cool that when you get to Indy, like you said, you guys went out to the mall, nobody knew who the hell you were. And then by the end yeah. of it, you go in, you know, steak and take <laughs> right. at 3 a.m. And everybody knows right. who you are at that point. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I remember being, I don't even remember where it was. If it was at the, I don't know if you were there or not. Um, but I, we got into some part, I told you, I drove from Boston to Indy uh, with my now wife, we picked up a buddy of mine who went to Arizona, New Jersey, drove to Indy. And, um, we got into some, I don't know how we got in, but we got into some party, but it was like a, sh- a ton of, of Arizona fans or whatever. Must have, maybe it was just in the hotel, like around the hotel, hotel lobby bar or something. I don't know, but Gene had the net around his, his neck at that yeah. point, I think. After, after the game. Yeah, it was out. It was probably yeah, a couple that- hours after the game. Yeah, that was at our, I think that was at our hotel and they had yeah. brought like the Sears trophy in there right. and everything. Yeah. 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 I, rem- I remember that. Yeah. I remember I mean, that. Just, yep. just a crazy <laughs> moment for a city that again, in a program that had come close and, and, and I don't know what it meant. I don't know if you realized at that point, what it meant for that program to, like you said, you kind of knew for, for Lute Olson kind of knew, but he was still, he wasn't, that older then, you know, he was, he was younger. He still had some years left. Yep. I, I don't know. If, did you realize the impact it would have? No, not at that time. I'm, I'm too, I mean, I'm 21 years old. Like I'm only, li- I'm only living in the like day to day, you know? So like, I have no idea about like 
the lasting impact. And, and plus your expectation at Arizona is like, well, let's go do it again. So you think you're going to win it again or like, you know, or the program's going to win it within the next couple of years because like you got all these great players coming in. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to win a national title. And that's what makes it so much more special because it, it's, it's hard to do. Very few, very few get it done. Very few get it done. Well, listen, appreciate you catching up. Uh, 1997, most outstanding player, Miles Simon. Uh, I appreciate you, you, you giving me some memories too. You know, that was, that yeah, was no nice. Yeah, no problem, brother. I appreciate you having, thanks no. for having me on.